with uh, Pablo. Keith, do you want do you wanted to um, get down on your hands and knees to the referee fraternity, didn't you? Uh, I want to apologize. Um, I forgot on the slide. We do have a, a PFL head of referees. Uh, his name is Antonio Cardoso. Many of you know him. Uh, he's a referee from Portugal, lives in Lisbon. Uh, right now, he's building a database of referees from around the world that will come and help uh, the referee program. And so, I want to apologize, Antonio, if you're watching. Uh, my deep uh, apology to him. So, uh, we do have a head of referees for him. That's great. So item 402 went on the to-do list and it's been able to be crossed off by that because he now knows you're not all of those that you know it and not going to go in there. Uh, welcome back online, welcome back at Brenton Park and uh, very much looking forward to this. Um, Pablo, you will have seen over the last 24 hours, has been with us. Um, he's uh, head of futsal and women's football at Real Betis and he's going to give us a, a a Spanish business flavor, and I'm sure you're going to give him a warm welcome, a warm official welcome anyway. Uh, Pablo Vilches. First of all, I want to begin thanking uh, Futsal Sokos uh, to be there, asked to be here today. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud and honored to represent my club in this event. Uh, also, thanks to them on show who was the, the, the man who connected us. And to Tamara and Robert to hosting us. For people who love football, it's uh, very exciting to be in, in a place like this, in a stadium like this, with so much history around it. And I want to congratulate Kate for the great presentation you did. Congratulations. I love the way the American people uh, mix their export and business. It's fantastic. Congratulations, for it. Uh, well, uh, before I begin the presentation, I want to introduce myself. Uh, all you know I come from Real Betis, but I want to explain you a, a bit of my background, professional background. As you can see, I came from the business and management um, background, not from sport background. It's important because the, the presentation is around the business in futsal and so on. Um, how Real Betis get involved in Futsal and why, okay? Uh, I, have, I have, during 10 years, my own business. Uh, after this, I was a chef financial officer in a construction business. And after this, the last employee for Betis, I was a, a hotel general manager. Uh, many different worlds, but all focused in, in managing. And the final is Betis uh, called me. They, they decide the need to professional uh, people for develop the sections. And I arrived to Betis uh, two years ago only. Okay. And we are going to see now in the first slide uh, a little bit of the history of Real Betis football club, not football one, the whole one. Why would I want to share it with you? Because uh, I think it's important you understand the social media we have, the many fans we have, and the culture we have in the club. Okay, so I'm gonna put a, a video. Yeah. 
What kind of businesses were you involved in, Pablo? Well, you said you were involved in, in ah, businesses. I, I had an editorial for making books for university the, um, of uh, business administration. Okay. I can have seen this video one million times and I'm excited each time I see it.
Well, I was told and uh, I become the director of section of Real Betis. The section are three sports section: uh, futsal, uh, where I want to talk today, women football, and basketball more recently, from one, one year ago. Uh, women's football are uh, playing in first division in the, the top, uh, and basketball is also in the top league of Spain. Futsal is in second division, we are trying to promote to first division, it's our objective from last year, and we hope this year we can, we can do it. Okay, first I want to, to, to try to keep it you in your mind. In Spain there is a futsal court in all places. Schools, streets, parks, in all places. So it's a very socialized sport. It's very different from other countries and other cables uh, before. All wonder has sometimes like played futsal, and it makes easier to to knock on the door of a, of, of a football club and, and try to do something with that. It's different than here. You are beginning with this. But this, this is taking off here, and I think it's a good moment for do all we are doing here in the Futsal and Focus. Uh, Real Betis, as you have seen in the videos, very, for us, very big, uh, including in Spain, has two titles of football I'm talking, and is the biggest one with uh, fans in Andalusia, even for, uh, up from Seville. Uh, next week, Sevilla is coming to play here against Liverpool. But we have 50,000 uh, season ticket holders, which is a lot for us this year. It's the historical record, and we have to do nothing in sport results. Nothing from 10 years ago. We don't understand. We say that we, we fun, our fans are uh, crazy people for our cause, but it's true. We, we can't understand. 50,000 season ticket holders is almost a new stadium you have seen. Always, a whole, full, always, is sold out. We have 60,000 tickets in the stadium and 50,000 season ticket holders. It's like a, a religion there for us. Uh, okay, uh, talking about the session again, the current board of directors uh, make a firm commit to promote the sport in all its disciplines under the brand of Real Betis. Uh, I was told you about futsal, women and basketball, and also we have academy of all these sports. Okay? Three sports have academy. Football is in any way, in other way. We told you that uh, I want to convey you that the main one of our group is his social mass, which makes him be the fourth or fifth team of Spain in TV tracking, merchandising, and fan club subscribers, etc. We have more than 400 fan club, fan club over the world. Two of them are here in the United Kingdom. We have in the States, we have in Russia, we have you know, over the world. We are one of the world club, football club with more fan clubs in the world. Uh, and now we are going to see the why we are here. Okay? Why have a futsal section? Why? It's difficult to explain because if you have a football club like this, you, you don't need it. What gives futsal to you? in all the ways, not only in the sport one, you have to, to think about the business one and the technical and tactical in the sport way. Okay. So, what added value does futsal bring to a football club? For example, provides title. In some cases in Spain, the futsal section provides more title than the football section. And you can say, that, well, our title that has less value, yes, but the fan feel it like him, are of the arm, are of the uh, shirt, the colors. They have a new title and they can enjoy of it, then football they can't. It educates in values and grand social projection, since the club dedicates resources to a minority sport, but very much prioritizes it, especially that is prioritized from very young people. Okay, it's important this value to is added value to have a push section. It's favor the identification of fans with the club. 
what it means. It means in futsal, like the people is playing the players uh, earn less money, much less than in football. Usually are from the town, are from the other neighborhood. They can't go to other to other city to live, so they have to play in the local team, and it makes the, the fans get uh, know them. They have uh, been with them all life, uh, and players that are born and raised in the city of the club in question. Okay? It's important the community. You have your players being with you all days, and you can see them. If we talk about uh, another reason, we can find a uh, corporate social responsibility reason. If Betis uh, decided to have a food section, because one action that will be framed with social, social corporate responsibility will be the existence of other sports sections, which represents a small percentage of the entity's budget. It has to be said that all of them are traditional loss making and are assumed by the entity. The club thus promotes, supports and develops a sport that are not available to football. Okay. On the other hand, the fact that football has the level of popularity that has in Europe and a large part of the world gives it a special responsibility towards society because of its capacity to show behavioral patterns, create social values, influence society as a whole and especially to young people, of course. And um, now, nowadays, unfortunately, uh, top level sports clubs are no longer considered a sporting result as a unique, as an exclusive challenge. They have rated their value proposition as to promote a total experience. What means an experience? In which feelings, identification, sporting result, economic sustainability, merchandising, and so on is involved. Okay? The management of this virtual cycle on relationship with stakeholders, dialogue process, confidence building, and joint value creation that are the basic of CSR management in any organization. Uh, I'm going to try to talk about technical training and nutrition. I'm not coach, I'm not a coach here, so I'm, I'm not there to, to say nothing. Okay? I'm only going to say what my head coach told us is a video. Said, put this video and it means why we have to have a full cell section. It's a very current video. Or last Saturday, this guy is Kisco. It's a match against Italy. And he's doing football movement in a football match. Say, for this reason, a football club has to have futsal section. Okay? For this uh, score, that is for all the football players. I'm sorry, sorry, anyway. Now we are going to see uh, another video that is from other uh, Spanish player. This is from the last Saturday. The video we are going to see now is older. And it's from and Andres Iniesta, I think you all know him, he plays a lot of futsal. And it's a commercial, but it shows how it all begins with the team.
fiesta. Well, it's true that Iniesta keep uh, playing for Sapa. As you say, Damon is not part of their uh, training of golf. But he he did because he loves the sport. Okay. Is the result of the example of footballer who comes from Futsal and continues to take advantage of the technical movements of one sport in the other? Well, we are going to use the example of Real Betis and another reason because we believe that the process that has been carried out to interiorization of Futsal has been a very gradual, non-aggressive process combining the parties involved in the agreement and therefore that it must produce more lasting or even permanent result. Uh, how Futsal arrives to Betis? You can't, can't make a Futsal club from one day to another. Okay. We have, uh, I have to explain to you why Futsal, where was Futsal before arriving to Betis and that's why we have to talk about Football Sala Nazareno. This is the, the germ of the futsal in Betis today. It's a Spanish futsal club, futsal club, not football one, futsal club that was founded in 1987, 30 years old. This club today has more than 20 teams playing in all categories. And this club, four years ago, in season 12-13, decide that they need to, to jump to another category but they don't have the economic um, financial resource for it. So they knock the door of Betis and try to combine them to have a futsal section, in this case a futsal <coughs> team only. Only the first team was talking about. We are talking season 12 to 13, only four years ago. Uh, Betis decide to support them, it's the beginning of the agreement. And this is an agreement that only implicates to give Nazareno the logo, the brand, and the clothes. Only. The only for from Betis, and this is the only they give. No financial support, no one. It's, it's good because Betis don't care about it, it don't cost them. You have now my uniform, you have my brand, it's a great value. Use it. You can now access to different uh, sponsorship. You can access now to different agreements with other people that if you haven't this uniform or this brand, you can have. So, that's a relative. And in this season, they uh, promote to second division, but they have enough money for promote. And Betis didn't give the money. Why? It's the agreement. You have to be uh, economic assistant level. We, don't, you, we can't give you money. Okay? It's a hard time for the futsal club. But keep on the next season, again, won the league and promote to second division. But in this season, matters one thing that is absolutely uh, fundamental in all we're talking. The team beat two first division teams in the cup, Copa del Rey, the king um, in cup in Spain, it's like your cup here. And uh, they draw with El Pozo in quarter final. El Pozo is one of the best teams in the world, but the lucky is that Nazareno was wearing the shirt of Betis. So the match that will be sure a good match and a great match in the Spain become a fantastic match. They have to move to another venue to have more people to see it. And finally, 8,000 people come to see this match. A match with a second division team. And it made possible that today, today, there is a futsal section in Real Betis. Why? This day, all the members of the board of Betis go to the pavilion and see it full of people. Most of them never have seen a futsal match before, even in Spain, even in Spain matters. They see what the, the whole pavilion full, they see the income with the tickets, 
a teaching cone uh, allow Betis to a final of the season to pay and promote to second division. Because Betis is not going to give money. It's, it was clear at this moment. So this is a very slow, uh, little by little uh, agreement. As, as you see, don't knock the door and give you money for, for the blog, the futsal and so on. It has been a, a very slow, a very slow process. After this match, I'm gonna put some pictures to you. Yeah. This is the pavilion in Seville. Uh, absolutely sold out. This is when someone first time comes and see this, uh, get shocked because they, they can't imagine <laughs> this matter in this with a sport, a minority sport in Spain years ago. But all in this case, all this was provoked for the brand of Betis. Betis uh, made a lot of mobilization by, by his social media. Betis mobilized mobilize the uh, season ticket holder and it's easier for, for them to go to the match. And this match was fundamental in all we are talking today. After this match, we finished the season, promote for second division and campaign with the come of these matches, and began a new season in 15-16 season, and again, the lack we play in Copa del Rey and on the other against Inter Movistar. We beat two first division two, and we have another team. This second match is the same. Sold out, 8,000 people, best team in the world visiting us, and Betis, with the experience of the last year, decide to uh, say they, to promote it in all the ways, in all the ways, and this is the moment that the chairman of Real Betis, in this day, that they, they say, decide to have Pusal. What the second experience in one year, and he decided this day to have a Pusal section, because he said that this uh, importation, all is good for Betis. Here, you can take nothing back from here. It's not an income of a financial way, but it's true that it's a, a very big moment for them. You give your fan another way to enjoy, okay? Not only football one. This was 15, 16 season, and at the end of, the, of this season, the Real Betis decide to have an integrate Absolutely, a futsal section in the club. What it means? It means that from this moment, all the players are employed of Real Betis, all the staff and all one. They are involved in the diary operation of the club, and I get like director of sections, not only futsal, and I manage all of them, but with the resource of a big club of football. Not what we want before. For example, we can see the presentation of the season ticket of futsal. Okay, before we are ready, we did well, we did nothing. We we make two pictures and upload to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so nothing more. First time we did with Betis, we did a presentation. And Betis decided this presentation is in in the stadium, with a press room. And I never seen before so many cameras. I never seen before no one camera in Nazareno. But this day, were well, more than 50 journalists there. We was in TV, we was in radio, we was in paper, we was in social media, we was in all. I don't know if you, someone of you know this guy. He's a football player is uh, Charlie Musonda, is playing in Chelsea. And it was in this season in Betis. And it's so easy, if you are inside a football club, 
let's say you have this, uh, okay, Charlie is gonna go with you a percent this. It's, it's the difference is very, very big because only for the percent of, of him we are in all the medias. Those are the synergy that we can use or we are using now that we are part of a football club. Okay? So it's important we use all the resources, but it's important too that the club is uh, compensated to have a futsal section. Not possible to do this if the member of the board don't support this decision. Okay? This is a a very plastic example of how Shane in one year from being a neighborhood club to be in all the media these days. It's very important for us from this moment to move forward. We are now a section of a big football team, suddenly, no, not suddenly, I have told before. It's, for, it's an agreement developed very slowly, very slowly, patiently, and after four years of a very polite uh, agreement, all parts are convincing. They are not expensive for a, for a football team. They see honesty, professionality, commitment, and they decide to do it. It's very important to do it quiet and working. It's all working. When Rabbit is futsal, in this moment you saw before with the football player, we integrate inside of the structure of the club, and in this moment uh, the club need to change. Okay? Why? Because the, there are new people arriving to the club, and they create a new organization chart inside the club. This organization chart we are see only referring to sections and we can see here here board director of course the general manager my boss I depend on him the general manager talking about the agreement told me one time because I have a uh, thing those years I have been in both sides of the table I have been you know, the side asking for the money to pay this, and after I've been this side managing the money of it, I'm saying now no to my people. Okay? But the general manager told me in one of these meetings, uh, we are going to do an agreement like a courtship. Is a courtship? Yes. Don't commit in the beginning, and if finally we fall in love, we commit to love and for our life. <laughs> And I am, okay, it's true, it's told me. I'm mattering, okay? After this, after the general manager that he supervises all the operation of the club, it's the director of sections, it's me, and here are the sections. Okay, Sal, women's, basketball, and academy. We have the same structure for all the sections. What this means, we have an executive committee, a manager for the section, first team, and lower categories. Now we are going to see this with more detail, the futsal. But it's important this, if we have another section of handball, we, have, we are going to have the same structure. What is the executive committee? Uh, who is there? There are four people in the executive committee. The head coach of the section, the manager, are different people, me and one member of the board is always in the executive committee. Four people decide all the strategic things about the section, and in this case, of Uxal. And this is really important because these two arrows communicate us with the club, club resources, administration, football, etc. What does it mean? All the section needs we take from the club. We have synergy, we have lawyer, we have communication, marketing, merchandising, traveling, all. But it's taken from the football club. We are inside of the organization chart. We are not apart. Okay? We are absolutely integrated. 
Here, on the right, it's all the blue. Oh, it's football and all the areas you can imagine. But at the, at the same level, the, uh, it's very important because if you get inside a football club and you are not so away, you are apart or you are in a lower level, finally you will be a minority sport inside your own club of football. Okay? We're going to take a look to the detail of the futsal section, which is a very important line. This line. It's very important. And the executive committee we have followed it, but from this line to down are sport decisions. It's not up to me, fortunately. Okay? It's a sport decision. What does it mean? In any club, you can't be, we, the people that are not a sport area, can't be talking with the coach. To, about who is playing, who is not playing, who is playing bad, who are we going to contract, who are we going to fire, no. You have to be absolutely independent from the sport area to the structure area. And we did. This is our real chart and <coughs> it's the way we do it. The manager is, you have seen it in the before chart, and now we found here the head coach of the first team so the head coach of all the section. Okay, what is mean? Behind uh, him are all the first team, the B team, and junior team. Real Betis decide is a sport decision have only three teams. Those three teams, and where are the other twenty I told before to you are in Nazareno. And why decide this? Because we have. And here under 18 and 15 and 12, all the things you want. Why? Because when you have a big project of futsal, a rare and unique project of futsal like Tramary is doing, all the kids, all the young people of the city want to play with you. You don't need to have, if there are teams in the city, they are going to come to you when they have 16 or 17 years. You have no competence on this. So we have now the other team that are here in the club, Nazareno, I told you. Those teams still are alive. And when the kids arrive to this age, they come to here if they can play. If we don't, we make a selection with another team and another and another. So we have a very wide, um, what's the, very wide uh, market for play for young players to fill this team. It's a sport decision and we have only these three teams. In first team, this is the structure, our players, the team of the manager, a physio, physical trainer, second coach, and keeper's trainer. And the head coach. This is the structure nowadays of Real Betis Futsal. And in the other team, we have this structure and this is the same. We have a head coach in B team, a second coach in B team, a physical trainer exclusive for B team, equipment manager and the players. Okay. All the section in the club, including football, have this structure. This is the minimum structure of a team in our club. I think it's uh, enough structure to try to, to work and develop the sport. If you have noticed that, they, for example, the physiotherapist, he is also with the teams that are inside that. But this, this man travel with the first team wherever it goes. Okay? give support to them and the keepers training gives support to the other teams too. But it's very important I, I want you to realize of this. Eh? In our case we have very clear also in football that the sport decision must be taken for the sport professionals. I'm not talking about um, I'm a fan only. I don't have the knowledge that you can have for you because I'm a fan only. 
uh, the same way that they can't find, uh, talk to you about their budget or something like this. Okay. Any doubt about the shirt? It's clear. Where are you, Pablo? Here. Yeah. Yeah. Here. In the executive committee. Uh, well, but I'm before. Uh, here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. And, uh, but I'm not in the sports area decision. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. And I don't want to be. Yeah. Pablo, uh, the manager, Putal, what is their role? What is the. Uh, he managed all the sport aspects of the session, including contact new players. Okay. The coach proposed him to contact a player. For example, now we are contact, contact a Brazilian player. And he talked with the agent, negotiate, and so on. Okay. But he, he has a limit, the budget that the executive committee give him. But uh, the head coach and the manager is in the committee. So yes, they are the committee. Because you can't, uh, we can't take decision without knowing well, which is the value market of many players. So if you have to do a to a budget for all season, you have I have to talk with you and you say, no, those, those are players of one thousand or five hundred. You know okay. Thank you. And just to clarify, all these roles, all these uh, jobs are full time. Yes. Everything is everything we see there. Is a full time job. Employers through futsal. Real Betis has increased this employment in 100 with the sections from futsal and women football. It's only football club can do this in a pain for someone. I, I'm still thinking, I think it, the NBA is an example for this. Barcelona uh, invest in their section in all of them basketball, football, handball, uh, hockey. The 10 percent, 10 of the budget are 6 million euros. The 10 percent, so they have a lot of money from doing things, of course. We are not in this percentage, we are a lot lower, but we are beginning. It's very important what Mark said, all these people is working to pay this. Obviously, they, the physical trainer collaborate with the football team what they need and they have to produce some synergy. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Can you tell us about, about the budget for the section of food service? Yes, of course. Uh, when we become British Futsal um, last year, we was in around 100, 200,000 euros before being in this. Obviously, when you get inside the structure, you are part of it, you increase the value. Not only increase the problem to get the money and are over, you have the money, but you have to administrate it for we said before. You can uh, do it uh, so quickly that the member of the board thinks that it's not going, uh, something is going wrong there. Okay. And now, the whole section is around half a million euros. But the way you the way you travel chain before those guys goes to the match in his own cars. Of course, they can't eat. We have a sandwich, a chain of this. They go by bus, official bus. They have lunch in restaurant. If they play in the morning, the night before they sleep in the city where they are going to play. So it makes so that the budget gets increased artificially. Not artificially, but it's a culture of the club. You, you give better conditions to the players. And, uh, and the budget is controlled by the manager? By, uh, by me? Yeah, by you guys. I mean the doctor, yes. no, they yes. told me. Yeah. Okay, all this no. Yeah. You have here... The general manager has the budget of all the club, so it gives you your part. This idea is the money you have, and you have to. Well, in the whole season, you you have this money. Don't ask for more. <laughs> you surely ask. You surely ask. Well, we are, we are talking only about cost. You realize we are not talking about incomings, right? 
Well, after I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the Liga in Spain and talk about the comics and so on. But I love, I love. Uh, asked me yesterday, someone don't remember, and he said me that the perception was other about the incoming coming from La Liga. But now we are going to talk about this. Well, I think it's clear for you this. So. So we're going to take a look for the Spanish League. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to, to clear a concept that yesterday I, I realized that it's not clear. Uh, in Spain, there, in Futsal, I'm talking now, there are two uh, organisms, say, or agency, two agencies that are the federation, like yours one, that is this one, A is this, Real Federación Española de Fútbol, okay? and La Liga, a two different agencies. But La Liga is an association of clubs, okay? We are an association, we are not a government, uh, as you see, not we are an association, and the members are all the clubs that are playing in first and second division. What it means, if we are as association, we look for best interest for us, of course. It's a model that is cloned from football. Football just go made also a liga, and this liga uh, fight for the. Television rights, for example, and this Liga uh, fights for benefits for the players and so on. It's association. We both the member of the board of this. We both the chairman of this. We, the club. So if we have uh, obligation, we have also the same benefits. If something goes wrong, goes wrong for all, and it goes well, it goes well for all. This concept is important because you can say, okay, so you are an association, why you are not having your own competition outside the Federation? Because the same as in other countries, in the state too, no? we depend of the football <coughs> federation. In Brazil, no, they have a different federation. And what it means, this relationship is good, but you can say, okay, so what do the Liga and what do the Federation? Why have two agencies? Federation is the agency that provides the referees, for example, are from Federation. It's the one that uh, make all the enrolls of players and teams. We enroll in Federation, and Federation allow you to enroll some players and some, some teams or not. The Liga has nothing to say in this, okay? But the Liga is the one that organizes the competition. They decide when we play, where we play, how we play, if the security is okay, if the uniform arms are okay, a separate thing. But it allows the Liga to, for example, go for our TV rights, <coughs> not Federation. Liga do it because they have the rights of the competition. Uh, I'm now, I'm being clear with this. You follow? Okay. The Liga uh, now, for example, we are trying to uh, get some money. Uh, I think it was uh, Michael Scubala told me, ah, but, but I think you receive more than the normal. This year we have received 4,000 euros. Four. We're talking about half million. We have received four. So don't pay the uniform for us. <coughs> but if, if you think years ago we received, we received nothing or less than nothing, sorry, not me. It is here actually. But it's uh, two in the iPad. It's uh, his smelling place. <laughs> It's a good restaurant. 
Your reservation is confirmed for the weekend. Sorry. <laughs> so, taking part of, of the point that is clear the separation between this and this, the last year's evolution of the Liga is very, very good. Okay? When Javier Lozano, I suppose many of you meet him, Javier Lozano is voted by us. He's our chairman. Next week we have election again. So he fight for our rights in all the agency. When he arrived in 2009, he found a Liga that debt several million euros. But that <coughs> was banked out. And he decided at this moment, 2009, that we have to change. We all the clubs. The debt was of the club. If you are a member of the association, if the association debt money, you debt money. You share money. And he began a very, very hard financial work. And now, not only not that money, even we have some money. Not a lot, but we have some money. When I said we means the Liga. Okay? But it has been by a lot of financial control to the club. Uh, you know uh, what is financial doping? You are familiar with it? Mm, we are not allowed to give the budget and not present why. We said our 500,000 euros. Okay, sure, but where this money comes? It's come from sponsorship. Give me the contract. Give me the, the date they are going to pay you. How are they going to pay you? It's a handshake a lot in Spain. It has, has been a very big and great shame because four years ago was teams that said, okay, I'm going to pay 1 million euros this season. And in December, the team disappears. Superior means uh, high, uh, low quality of competition means uh, that you project a very bad image to your sponsors, to your players, to, to all. So Javier decided that it was over this, these years and established a financial control that today, at this season, have been fired two teams from the second division. Fired. It was in second division, and they sell so the budget with no uh, justification of the incomings and are, was fired. It's very hard because <coughs> you have to explain a city, you have to explain a uh, community that they have to lose the team in the first or second division. The two has been fired, has been in second division. Teams that are in first division has a very big structure and a financial structure and know that the rules of financial rules are, are very, very hard those years. With all this comes the development of the brand. You can't develop a brand if you, the members of your brand are not clear in financial things, especially. So Javier, is, that's why Javier is so intense with that, with all this stuff. They are now developing the brand because all the teams that are part of the La Liga are financially healthy. It means that if you invest in my team and you are a sponsor, you know that you have not been trouble of financial. The players are going to be paid, the doctors are going to be paid, the facilities are going to be paid. It can be not serious, but it was mattering a few years ago eh? in Spain. And some club disappearing during the competition. It was very, very bad to develop uh, a league, as you can imagine. With this, Javier wants the club development in two ways. One is that football comes to futsal. It combines it that the development of the league in Spain pass through a way that the football club comes to the league. Was four football clubs in futsal five years ago and now are ten. And the future is 
except both an intern that they have enough money and financial resource that all the other becomes football clubs that are investing in futsal. This is the, the landscape in Spain. Why? Because they have the money. Where is the money? In, uh, I'm talking about Spain. Where is the money? Um, football. TV. TV rights. Same that Premier League. TV rights. Uh, Real Madrid is a lot of money. And that's what we try to the clubs of football that comes to the futsal, keep with us, have a satisfactory experience with the futsal, and they keep investing in this. And the other way of the club development, and we told just the is, is the structure. The Liga gets very emphasis in the club, has structure. Make a structure they have and why do the players go and come because it's the same, but if you have one uh, structure, you can look for but to see for sponsorship, look for facilities, look for a lot of things that if you don't have any structure, you can do administrative things, legal things. In Spain, in second division, there are a lot of clubs, there was a lot of, there were a lot of clubs that don't have any structure, one person. Is the president, the chairman, the member of the board, the, say, the merchandising, the marketing one, the social media, all. And it's not possible. If you want to grow, you have to have a structure. And it's very important. They are incentivized to the club that we have to have a very hard structure. And we're very slow, but we keep growing, growing, growing. To be growing, our growing future is to increase the income. Of course, this is a business, finally. And how is it coming? Coming of TV. TV is uh, the rights. The TV rights are now in two television. Was first in only one local national television in Spain, but now it's also in Eurosport. Last night I was watching a Spanish football a futsal match, and it's in, they are paying for it. I, I said the broadcast in Spain for broadcast the the matches, and you say of course. A few years ago, La Liga paid it for the matches was broadcasted. We have to pay for it. It's not logical, but what's mattering? no interest, no good product, no good quality. So it has changed a lot and now we can find that we are receiving a few money that is growing year to year. And I suppose in a few years we are not, never been like football, but if you can live and, and your budget is compensated in income, it's enough for us. For this, you have to be a very committed club, and very honest uh, organization and you have to project quality, you have to, to take care of all the details from the, the little club to the biggest one. For example, uh, La Liga has made an own product that is the Copa de España. It's a tournament that plays the eighth first team in first division and now I think it's the best futsal tournament in the world probably. Some of you have been there and if you haven't been, please try to go. This year is going to be in Madrid. It's going to be the biggest one we have ever done. And this product is a product is selling now to the cities. You before four years ago, you have to ask the city for the facility. You ask the city for the buses. You have to to ask the city for the hotels. Now they give you and they pay for it. Why? or receive eight or 10,000 fans one week. It's very important for the city. Imagine here, all the hotel food, the restaurant, the car, the taxis, and uh, the sport uh, develop is amazing. I think I have. This is the Copa, last year. 
and all days was sold, was sold out all, all days. The seventh is making La Liga to earn some money, and this money is making that you can make this each year better and better and better. In two or three years probably there was a lot of city wanting to have this event. These two in this in the same city and the winner is of course Inter Movistar. But this product now is a growing product that La Liga is developing better. With more uh, future also goes for the new technologies. La Liga and, and Diego uh, talked with me about this. He's uh, broadcasting uh, all his matches but has no money for doing it. So they are doing uh, streaming all the matches and it's very good for all the people. Why? Because you can see it, you can uh, watch it at home, mobile phones but also for the coaches. With this, has created a platform where all the, ma all the matches were played in a, fin in a weekend, and the coach can see the rivals of all the league. Two years ago, it was impossible thinking this, because you can go to the other side of Spain to record a, a match, but now you have the sort of improved. But especially, the, the growing future is about TV rights, about the Copa, and about to have a competition that be a quality competition and the sponsorship can come to us and be uh, with us a lot, a lot of your investing money. Okay, so I think it's all I have to say about this. If you have any question about La Liga or the concept of an association and so on, Well, I think first of all, um, Pablo was very nervous about his English before he started this. I think we have to say, folks, what about you? Yeah, I'm I'm not nervous. I don't understand calling. It's very strange to me to understand better an American guy than a British guy. <laughs> Matters, yeah, you're, you're not the only person. Yeah, yeah. There are I really many like English it. people who would understand an American better than me, Pablo. How established is the league? And I ask that question. It, the futsal team is not vulnerable to Betis saying, ah, oh, no, not enough. There's not enough for us coming from it. But it means when. This, this season? No. What what business plan do Betis have for the futsal? Do they do they need to make a return in one year, three years, five years? Well, uh, it's not a financial strategy. It's first a sport one. The team has to be in first division. Yes, obviously. If we are not in first division. We are out of all this we was talking. We are not in Copa, we are not in TV on Sunday, on Sundays, we are not in all this. So we need to be in first division. That's why the budget increase in contract players. A lot. A lot. And this is the first thing that the club decide to increase the, the money for the players they are coming. After this well, they want to have a whole structure, as you see before, with many academies of futsal, with more teams playing futsal, and in the future with a uh, own venue for basketball and futsal, but free part of us. Not now is from the town hill where we are playing. But just to be clear, you're talking about being the football team being in the first division of La Liga. Futsal team. Are you also futsal? So if 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 Betis is in first division. Yeah, I know they are, but only got promoted again in 2012. I forgot, I forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> but is the futsal team vulnerable if the football team is relegated out of La Liga? No, it's passive. 
Giras at all could be if the football team goes to second division, all the session disappears. But now they are very established. It's very, very difficult, this matters. Yeah. Um, but is it possible that football team go to second division? <laughs> I like a man who's confident. It, that, that was my question, the vulnerability. I, I understand. Just ago, good matter. Yeah. But not now. And so, the key performance indicators, the things that the futsal team needs to do, mm -hmm. what are those key things that, that the big overall club is looking for? Well, we have to grow in the structure a bit more, a bit more. And we have, but all passes for the sport wrestle. We have to be in first division. And when you are the general manager, manager, you ask it, would have under him a technical advisor without a technical coach too for the for the section. But we have to grow in in people in the section, in all the section, but specifically in futsal. Is the next battle. Any questions, please? Pair, what are your thoughts overall? You were you were you were helping us out there. You were some as well. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Yes, with uh, yeah the football clubs. So the trend is that uh, football clubs start to get involved in football in sections. Uh, do you see do you see that trend? Yes, yes, yeah. a lot. This year have been three, if I remember, Cordoba. Satsuna with Magna Grupea and uh, really the other three. And it's important you know, because they are realizing the problem. I, I told you about the financial problem of years ago, and we have a bad image. So they take care of the futsal people. They are doing strange things with the money years ago before 2009. And this <coughs> has been broken. The football teams seem that it's a good inversion. It's a social inversion, uh, and the uh, best example is is uh, going well for the other clubs. Javier Lozano employs us a lot, and usually go to some clubs to, to combine him. I have another question: uh, the junior team. Which which age was that? Because uh, began in 16 years. 16. 16. And then we have clubs around uh, Real Betis who's uh, arranging uh, futsal for younger. Yeah, of course. We have come to Real Betis. Nazareno, this one at the top, yeah. is still with the, all the categories. And after we have some uh, filiality, so this is the sport filiality with many clubs in Seville, that when they finish in 16 years, they send us the, the kids for captation. Sorry, are you trying to attract my attention, Steve? I'm spotting a fly. Right, I'll fight you now, mate. Uh, I'm going to say a dirty word to you. Sevilla, are they doing the same? Do, yeah, Sevilla football. Are they doing yeah, I understand. First yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, okay, it's very special the rivality we have. We have on the North Series. And please, can you cut this? <laughs> of course, for our sport, it'd be great that Sevilla has a, a team of futsal in the same city and that we are Derby, of course. I can't say this in Spain and unless in my city. You are saying, it's true. You are saying it in Spain. No, it's good. <laughs> okay, but it's, like it's true. It could, it could Hold be. on, I've got an idea. Wait a, wait a minute. There we go. That's fantastic. We'll have to leave you for a second. There we go. You can do it now. Listen, to it, it would be sure for growing the sport in the city and La Liga is dirty with matters. They want it matters. This has just mattered, nothing to be full in women football. We was in first division and this season Sevilla becomes the first division. And they are delighted to have a derby in first division. TV has bought this match now, it's in January. And in futsal it's gonna happen something like this. But Sevilla made an experiment with futsal years ago. The hard years of financial are not worth well good. But I don't want to talk about them. I have enough all day. Yeah, I know that. I kind of, <laughs> what's the population of Seville? It's around one million with metropolitan area. 
and 700 votes on the midterm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was the same with Antonio with, with Braga and Portugal. I just wonder how it's possible to create these sporting clubs because over here we are very well. Obviously, we've got our other sports, but nobody's been able to really build a club. I'm not right, wrong. Am I? Has anybody been able to build a sporting club over here? Lots of different sports around. Say one football brand. Sorry. Well, Jess, come forward, will you please? Just come and join us, Jess, please, for a second. Come on, Jess George is from Cambridge United. Yeah, come on. He's going to join us right away today. He thought he was having morning off, but he's not. Come on forward. Is that what you're trying to do? Is that a model you're trying to work towards? I think um, I think I should give some credit to Steve Lansdowne at Bristol City because I think he's ah, yeah, pretty good job yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. And, uh, He's got a few more quid than we have as well. Well, but I think it's a model that... I think football clubs need to be something for everyone within the community, I think. And uh, if you happen to be in a city where you're the largest sporting organisation, I think you can go out of your way to help other clubs. So we have a relationship with a cricket club and we do cricket coaching in the summer because they play at a really good level but they're a really small organisation. So I think where you can add some infrastructure and add some help and contribute rather than taking over or rather than saying you know you know better than them but you can create something that um, you know maybe an umbrella organization that can help other sports I think then it's worth looking at yeah and that's something that we do at the moment. Mm. I mean but but Steve's Lansdowne and, and Sport Bristol I mean Steve is a Steve is a billionaire Hargreaves Lansdowne the, the investment brokers so it's not, it doesn't feel quite the same. Yours seems to be based on community more yes. than a very rich benefactor. Yes. We, for example, I was thinking, he was talking, uh, there are two journeys this season, two, that the four sessions plays at home, as home team. And it's for the fun and for the community, it's amazing because you are, the, the whole weekend <coughs> is something to do with the same brand of your team, with the same clothes, with the same shirt. You go to basketball, after you go to futsal, after to women, and after you go to see your first game of football. And it's, for us, it's very important, yeah, and for the fans too. I suppose, from the point of view of our under-resourced football teams, don't worry, you're standing away from it, it's all right, I'm not going to do anything. Um, I suppose it comes down to funding, that if a football club, say, aligns themselves with the local basketball team, but then finds that they're having to bail them out and pay for them, that's when it becomes difficult. I think the culture is different in England. I mean, if you go abroad, you know, sporting directors come because <laughs> there's different sports that encompass a football club, and it happens abroad as, as um, the model, really, and it's different in England. But I don't think everything has to cost money. I think you can just create, like you said there with your program, just be create a business plan that makes the program sustainable. Because if anything is requiring funding every year from the parent club, like you, the question you asked is, what happens when the parent club's looking to cut costs? So you have to create something that's sustainable, and I think you can do that. We've done that with futsal, so we'll talk about that later. But you can do it with other sports, and I think you're right that you create just an identity. And if football clubs take a long-term point of view, the long-term point of view, I think, certainly for a couple like ourselves, is that we always want to grow our fan base. We want to, we always want to look at the next generation of supporters, and we want to make the club grow. And the best way of doing that is to engage across a whole different load of sports. And we do that when we coach in primary schools. So really, it's just an extension of that same theory that you know. Football coaches are probably going to be able to coach other sports and if you can help other sports develop opportunities for kids to be healthy and get out there and play something, for me it doesn't matter whether they play football, hockey, cricket, rugby, futsal, as long as they're playing some sport then the football clubs, you know, helping to do that, then you're doing your job properly. So helping, yes, and I think it's easier for football fans or for football clubs that the first step <coughs> is futsal. It's more similar, and you can employ players and so on. Any more questions? Thank you, Jess. Any more questions for Pablo, please, before we break for lunch? No, I've said the magic no, word lunch. No, it's Stephen question. Pardon? No, it's Stephen question. No, no. Sorry. Stephen question. Stephen. Stephen.
Oh, who's this guy? Oh, he's gone. He was going to ask you a question. No question. Your question. You always win a question. Okay. Yes, it's just who wants Scotch eggs for lunch? That's the question. And there it came. Uh, let me just remind myself where we're heading this afternoon before we break. Uh, please. Uh, oh, of course. Yes, 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 yes. Al's going to give us his presentation. And then a huge, huge debate this afternoon involving Mark Palios. Jez is going to join us. Uh, Michael Scabala, the uh, Salt Technical Director of the FA. Michael's coming up. So to Mark Dick. Is that, is that you, Mark? I've not met yet. From the Football League Trust. And also Luciana is going to join us as well. So look forward to that. Uh, if you are watching us on the feed, uh, pick it up again if you would in about an hour's time, please. That's how long we're going to take for lunch here. Pick up those feeds. Please do uh, help to make this occasion as big as we can for futsal by uh, by sending out messages on social media and just sharing that link if you would. But it only remains for us to finish as we break for lunch by showing our appreciation. <laughs>